Well, hello everyone. Mike back here. Today I want to talk to you about blue atlas cedars. Cedrus atlantica glauca. Glauca means blue. That's the blue bloom that you find on blue atlas cedars. Uh, Colorado blue spruce. You can wipe it off with your fingers. It's basically tiny hairs that are plant sunscreen. So anyway, the blue atlas cedars, native to Africa, which is kind of unusual for plants grown in the central United States. It's from Morocco, Tunisia, the Atlas Mountains, hence the name. It is a big tree. It will get 60 feet tall. It's a tough tree. Doesn't have very many pests. Bagworms, few fungus diseases. But my pet peeve, at least here in the central United States, is people planting these things as foundation plants. These are big trees, guys. They get large and they grow pretty quickly when they're young. So keep that in mind when you're siding this tree around your landscape because they get big. And I see people putting them in tiny flower beds and in tiny, you know, right along the front of your house. And they're big. They will get big if they survive. And I want to talk to you about how to make them survive because I see so many of these little trees come out of the garden centers perfectly healthy and just go home to die. You know, you drive by a year later and they're bright orange or they're just sticks. And from what I've seen, that is mo mainly, mostly overwatering. They don't need that much water. If you're planning on planting blue atlas cedars, and having a full sun fescue lawn, it ain't gonna work. I won't even go into why you shouldn't be having a full sun fescue lawn in the central United States. You know, that grass is kind of native to the British Isles. Not really our climate around here, but I won't even go into that right now. That's another pet peeve. But atlas cedars need air on their roots. And by that I mean plant them shallow. Dig a bowl. If it's a ball and burlap tree, set the tree in stake it really good, cover it a little with some soil, but don't put mulch right up around the base of that plant so that the roots can get some oxygen because that's the quickest way to kill them is to overwater them. So if you stick them in your little tiny courtyard that doesn't get any wind through there, it's going to die. If you put it next to your fescue grass, it's going to die. You know, they just need a little bit of pre-site thinking and not seeing what your neighbors have done because your neighbors probably killed theirs. So when you start off with your blue atlas, look them over. They're grown from seed. Some are going to be a little bluer. Some are going to be a little spikier. They're all going to be a little bit different. So look for the ones that suit your taste. Mine have a tendency, as they've gotten bigger, for the branches to grow and then another branch to grow on top of it. Very tight and it's not a real good structure. So I've been going in, thinning them out, pruning them out. Don't be afraid to get into these bigger trees and thin them out, open them up, get them where the air moves through them, where they get some, some wind movement on those branches to increase that, that tensile strength in those branches so you're not having problems when the ice comes. Mine just laughed at the last few ice storms. Mine have made it just fine through these pitiful cold snaps we've been having. These Arctic blasts that should kill them if that tree is healthy not stressed and kept dry, they make it through the winter just fine. Now there are a couple things I've noticed about them in Oklahoma landscapes, and I'm sure this goes for landscapes across the central United States because these things grow basically the whole central half of the United States, is they will get a small male cone about that long, brown, looks kind of like a worm when it falls off. This is just the male cone. Leave them alone. They're not a big deal. They fall in the grass, mow them up, move on. As they get older, they'll get a very large female cone that is clearly a pine cone because they are in the pine family. Your blue atlas cedar should be moved away from your house, away from anything above it. When you plant the thing, look up. Oh, there's a power line. Oh, there's a line coming into my house. Oh, there's my cable. Don't plant it there because you know what our local utilities do to our trees if they get in their lines. So blue atlas cedars, love them. The new varieties, the dwarf horseman, is a grafted variety. It's going to be much more consistent. It's going to be the same color blue. It's going to have the same branching. 
The weeping blue atlases are trained into these crazy serpentine patterns. They won't stay like that unless you make them stay like that. That's grown in the nursery like that. So you can plant the thing, and if you let it go, you get this monstrosity of arms going every direction, and they just look like hell. Blue atlas cedars. Love them. Respect them from what they are. They're a big tree. Plant them away from your house. Give them lots of air. Water them good the first year or so. Then just normal rainwater seems to do just fine. One thing I have noticed is they do get some sap around the base of the trunk. And since my tree is the local internet for all the dogs, it drops some globs of sap that get between your dog's toes. A little bit of rubbing alcohol will get it off your dog's toes. But if you find something sticky in your dog's toes and he's been around a blue atlas cedar, that's what it is. So, blue atlas cedars. Love them. Treat them right, and they will make a gorgeous addition to your home landscape. Thanks. If you liked the video, hang on. More are coming. Bye.